In this session, we'll be basically detailing you about Kingdom Monaira. So the Monaira is one among the kingdoms, among five kingdom classification, and all the Monaira members are prokaryotes. Now the word when I say prokaryote, pro means primitive, karyon means nucleus. So the nucleus which is not well defined, it is not well developed and all the structures of nucleus like nuclear membrane, nucleolus are absent in kingdom monera members. The word monera has come from the word called monos and monos stand for single because all the monera members are single cellular. So they all are unicellular. If we can detail you about kingdom monera, so the first time bacteria were seen by Anton von Leeuwenhoek in the teeth scum and he called them as animalcule. Animalcule are like animal-like molecules. Now what happens because I've already told you this they are prokaryotic organisms. So when they are prokaryotic organisms they basically don't have all membrane bound organelles like mitochondria, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum maybe any more organelle are absent in bacteria the all organelle are not present except one very important organelle which is ribosome so ribosomes are present in kingdom monera members when you talk about ribosomes so ribosomes is again made up of two words this is ribosomes ribo sugar and zome means body a body which is carrying ribo sugar and ribo sugar are required for protein synthesis so even in Monera members, the protein synthesis occurs with the help of ribosomes like eukaryotes. The only organelle which is present in Kingdom Monera is ribosomes. And make sure that you remember that ribosomes is the structure. They are non-membrane bound. They don't have any membrane. Like if we talk about mitochondria, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum, they all are membrane bound organelles. But bacteria possess one organelle which is non-membrane bound. There are two types of ribosome, one is 70S, another is 80S. 70S is basically found in prokaryotic members. So till now we discussed, they are called animalcules. They are primitive, they have the primitive nuclei because of that they are prokaryotes. And they all these membrane bound organelles are not present in Kingdom Monera. They only have one particular organelle which is called ribosome and that ribosome is 70S. When you talk about cell wall, the cell wall is quite rigid in case of Kingdom Monera. And this cell wall, it's made up of peptidoglycans. So peptidoglycans, if you can talk, this is peptide. Peptide means the bond between amino acids and glycans means sugar. So basically this particular peptidoglycan is made up of sugar and the combination of amino acids there are four amino acids which are combined and forming peptidoglycans peptidoglycan has got another name called murine and peptidoglycan is a long chain it's a heteropolysaccharide hetero means it is made up of more than one monomer the monomers are called nag and nam nag stands for n acetyl glucosamine and NAM stands for N acetyl muramic acid. So continuous chains between NAG and NAM forms peptidoglycans. And when you give a patient like penicillin, so penicillin exactly breaks the bond between NAG and NAM, and that is what we get rid of bacterial infection. Apart from peptidoglycan layer, some bacteria will also have the third layer called glycocalyx. Like peptidoglycan will be one layer, cell membrane will be another layer. And some monera members will have glycocalyx outside the peptidoglycan layer which is made up of lipopolysaccharides. I've already told you that they are, they are not made up of any nuclei. The well-defined nucleus is absent. So the DNA remains present as in naked form. The DNA is not packed. In eukaryotes, if you can talk about the DNA is basically in the nuclei, in the nuclear membrane. So DNA are packed in eukaryotes. When we are talking, talking about Monera members, since there is no nuclear membrane, the DNA is naked. If you can talk about plasma membrane, the plasma membrane in all of the organelle, they are organisms that is made up of lipids and proteins. So cell membrane is always lipoproteinaceous. Now in Kingdom Monera, the cell membrane forms some infoldings and in these infoldings are towards cytoplasm and these infoldings are called mesosomes. In the latter case, we'll discuss about the functions of mesosome even. 
So most of the what you call kingdom monera member are heterotrophic, but autotrophic mem what you call nutrition is also present in kingdom monera, and for that they have this particular pigment called bacterial chlorophyll. Bacterial chlorophyll traps light and helps in photosynthesis of bacteria. Earlier I've already told you because they are heterotrophic, they are autotrophic, and autotrophic they have chemotrophic, and they are uh, what you call phototrophic. So because of this, the kingdom monera is the maximum nutritionally diverse kingdom. When you talk about motility, motility means the movement from one place to one another place. This is done with the help of flagella or gliding. They have the flagellary structure or they have the gliding movement. They can get and go, they can go and get stick to some surface. And when the surface is moving, so when the monera member is moving, members could be bacteria, archaebacteria, actinomyces, cyanobacteria, mycoplasma. They all are there in your syllabus, which will be detailing individually. Now when you talk about characters, I've already told you that glycocalyx layer is present in some members. That layer is outside the peptidoglycan layer. You will see there is cell membrane and the cell membrane will be lipoproteinaceous. After cell membrane, there will be peptidoglycan layer and some bacteria after peptidoglycan layer will have the third layer which is called glycocalyx layer. Now this glycocalyx layer is basically made up of polysaccharides where are complex carbohydrate. This glycocalyx layer protects the bacteria from drying out. It prevents the bacteria from desiccation. So, and from even from phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is being killed by other bigger molecules. So bacteria remains intact because of the presence of glycocalyx layer. Glycocalyx layer, it's present only in some bacteria and glycocalyx layer can be thin or it can be thick. The time it is thin, it is called slime layer. The time it is thick, it is called capsule. When you move in, like you get the cell wall, which we have discussed, and then you get the cell membrane, which also we have discussed. So when you talk about these three layers together, like you've talked about first layer, glycocalyx layer, cell wall, and then cell membrane, these three layers together are called cell envelope. So the bacteria where you have the glycocalyx layer, the cell, well, cell envelope will be of three layers. The bacteria which do, you don't have glycocalyx layer, the cell envelope will be two layered. When you talk about cell wall, we have already discussed that it is made up of peptidoglycan and what you call cytoplasmic membrane or cell membrane or plasma membrane or plasma lemma. It's always made up of lipids and proteins and lipids present in plasma membrane are in the form of phospholipids. The inner membrane called cell membrane sometimes also forms infoldings. Like let me show you infoldings. How are the infoldings? This particular cell membrane, when it is present like this, it is folding the infoldings like this. These infoldings are called mesosomes. Now these mesosomes, they are actively involved in respiration. They will have to take care of Krebs cycle. They will have to take care of other ETS cycle and all. In our body, Krebs cycle and ETS are going in mitochondria and mitochondria is the site for respiration. But in bacteria, there is no mitochondria. So how, how is bacteria getting the energy? For that, bacterial cell membrane will do form this infoldings towards the cytoplasm and on these infoldings, the respiratory enzymes are present and these what you call entities are called mesosomes. Now these mesosomes can be of any shape. This particular mesosome I'm talking about that can be of any shape. There are three functions of these mesosome. The first function I've already told you the cellular respiratory enzymes are present so they help in respiration. Second function, they sometimes get combined with the nucleoid of bacteria and help it in replication. And the third function, mesosome help in cell division. So there are three functions for mesosomes. When you talk about the DNA of bacteria, so DNA of bacteria, it is present with non-histone proteins. Always remember to pack DNA, there are some proteins required. And the proteins, those are required to pack DNA in eukaryotes are called histone proteins. In bacteria, histones are not present. Instead of that, some non-histone proteins like polyamines are present and they are combining and coiling the DNA. The DNA in that bacteria is nucleus free. It doesn't have nuclear membrane, so it is called nucleoid. A nucleoid is also called incipient nucleus or genophore, which is actually a naked DNA. It can also have RNA and non-histone proteins, I've told you. Non-histone proteins also I've told you like polyamines. When you see this DNA, this DNA is circular, it is double-stranded, it is GC rich. You must be knowing that G, oh, G and C stands for guanine and cytosine. The DNA basically has A, G, C, T, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine. 
the bacterial DNA is G C rich and this DNA of bacteria is considered as one chromosome. So bacteria are haploid basically. Now when you talk about bacterial structure, apart from this DNA, you have some more circular DNA present which is called plasmid that is extra chromosomal DNA. This DNA, the main DNA which is in the form of nuclei is called as what you call, extra, what you call the chromosome of bacteria. But this DNA is extra chromosomal DNA. This DNA is not making any chromosome. This is small and circular. Then what are the roles for plasmid? So plasmid has got some two, three important roles. The first role is this plasmid possess antibiotic resistance. It provides resistance to bacteria against various antibiotics. Second thing, plasmid can contain a factor called R factor and this R factor gives the same thing I'm talking about. The R factor gives its resistance. Second thing which I wanted to tell you is that can contain F factor. F stands for fertility factor. So if there is some F factor present in bacterial uh, plasmid that particular bacteria becomes male and if it has taken as F plus and if it is not present in some bacteria that bacteria is taken as F minus or recipient cell or female cell. Now this plasmid is also used as a vector in genetic engineering. Let's suppose you want to put some gene of interest in some bacteria with the gene of interest you will clone first in plasmid and that plasmid you will be sending in that but the other bacteria you want to you know put your gene in. So this plasmid will help you as a vector or carrier. When you talk about inclusion, so inclusions are the food reserves, food deposits. The bacteria will have to deposit the food for unfavorable conditions. So there can be vacuoles, it could be uh, you know metachromatic granules or starch or phosphorus particles. Now when I talk about vacuoles, always remember vacuoles means sap vacuoles and sap vacuoles are not present here. What I have written here is actually a vacuole which is called gas vacuole. Now remember what is sap? Sap is the combination between mineral and water. So sap vacuoles are basically the features of eukaryotes, not prokaryotes. If someone would ask you whether sap vacuoles are present in Kingdom Monera, your answer should be no. But only one type of vacuole is present which is called gas vacuole and basically the gas is filled in this vacuole. And Function of this particular vacuole is, this particular vacuole helps the bacteria in bio -ANC. bio ANC, you must have heard in Archimedes principle, because of bio -ANC, something remains afloat, it, something floats, something doesn't sink down. So gas vacuole is providing the bio -ANC to the bacteria. This is somehow the structure of bacteria where you can see different structures. I've talked about ribosome, I have talked about capsule which is thick glycocalyx layer. I've told, talked about cell wall which is made up of peptidoglycans. And I've also told you about the nucleoid which is a combination between DNA, RNA and non-histone proteins. And this is the cell membrane which is lipoproteinaceous in nature. You can also see there are two more structures which I've labeled here are uh, flagellum and pilus. Apart from flagellum and pilus, there is third mode structure which is called fimbri and all these three things make the surface structure. If you can look in the earlier figure, they were only present on the surface. They were not present inside the cytoplasm. So they were the, called the surface structure. So there are three surface structure we will be detailing here is flagella, pili and fimbri. Flagella it's for plural term. From singular thing, it is flagellum. Similarly, pili, it's plural term. Pilus is the singular term. Flagella are responsible for motility. Pili are responsible for conjugation. Now, what happens for motility, for movement among the bacteria, flagella helps. And flagella has got filament, hook and basal body. There are three parts. That also I'll be detailing you in the next slides. Now, filament is the largest part and it is made up of flagellin. When you look at the pili, Pili does what? Let's suppose you have a bacteria and in this bacteria I was talking about let's suppose this is DNA. You have another bacteria and let's suppose this is the DNA of this particular bacteria. Now what do you see? There is let's suppose this particular plasmid in this bacteria and this plasmid has got the gene called F factor which is called fertility factor. So this will become F plus and this will become F minus. Because of this F plus, the bacteria develops pili on the surface and with the help of pili, the bacteria catches hold the another bacteria. And the DNA of this bacteria will be transferred to this particular bacteria with the help of this 
pili combination which is called the conjugation tube now and this is one among the sexual reproduction in bacteria which is called conjugation so pili basically helps in conjugation the pili are made up of pilin and they are reported only in gram negative bacteria now what is gram negative and what is gram positive that will come when i will be taking taking you to the gram staining when you talk about fimbri so fimbri is one among the pili pili are actually larger pili or shorter pili so larger pili helps in conjugation and shorter pili forms a structure called fimbri and fimbri are for attachment like right? suppose the bacteria has to move somewhere and it will have to get attached to some some surface it will have to get adhered to some surface fimbri will help it to get adhered so next class will be basically detailing you about the structure of flagella in details